Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we are on episode number 225. As always, I am Shane Thomas. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at smthomas3. Today we're going to be talking about how to use Drupal Console to create a boilerplate Drupal 8 module. So if you're not familiar with what Drupal Console is, it's essentially a command line tool similar to Drush in a way if you've used Drush in the past but it has some really cool uh, kind of scaffolding tools for building out Drupal modules, themes and forms and all that kind of stuff that you might need to do if you need to actually get into writing Drupal code. So in Drupal 7, if you are familiar with writing modules or themes in Drupal 7, it didn't actually require nearly as many PHP files to get it all done. And because of how Drupal 8 structured in a more object oriented way, there's a lot more files that have to be created just to create a simple Drupal 8 module. So in order to kind of ease that burden and to make it a lot simpler, Drupal console can be used to generate kind of that scaffolding or that boilerplate module to use as a starting point. So let's go ahead and get started and we're going to see how you can use Drupal console to create a module. First thing we're going to do is go to drupalconsole.com and here is the actual website for Drupal console. It's going to have instructions on how you can get it downloaded. There's also a commands page and I believe they may be updating this to a different, slightly different format. So if it looks different when you're looking at it, it should be the same information. It just might be formatted differently, but there's a whole bunch of different commands that we'll be looking at here in a second. You can see they're all listed over here. In order to install this, in your project, you're going to want to use Composer. So it would be something like Composer require Drupal slash console. I've already run this. I already have it installed in my project. But if you run this, it's going to go ahead and install Drupal console in your project. And now that we are, we have this installed, it's on the Drupal root. If we just run Drupal console, you'll be able to actually see the commands. Now it actually installs it by default in this vendor bin directory. So you can see there's going to be a Drupal command here. This means that I may need to run it using something like this. So then I, I could actually run that Drupal console command on my project. I'm using Lando, which is just a development environment. It has some tooling to allow me to do something like this. Uh, but just keep in mind, depending on how you have it set up, there might be some different needs uh, for uh, actually getting it to work, getting this initial command to work. So if I run this, give it a second here, it's going to show me a whole bunch of different commands. The one that we're going to be looking for is generate module. You can see I could also do GM, but let's go ahead and do Lando generate module and it, whoops, Lando Drupal generate module. Again, you won't need to use Lando unless you're using Lando as your development environment, but it's just the Drupal command. Drupal console command with whatever the command that you want to command argument you want to run, which in this case is generate module. So you can see down here, it's going to ask us to enter the new module name. So I'm just going to do code karate test. This module isn't really going to do anything, but it's going to show you how the code is actually generated. So we're going to enter the, the module machine name. You can see it defaults it here to code karate test. I'm just going to leave it at the default. You can see it's going to put it in modules slash custom. I'm okay with that. I'm going to give it a description. Hit enter. I can enter a package name. So if I want it to be in the code karate package, I can do that. It's going to ask me the core version. This is going to stay at the default. And it's going to ask me some other questions on what I actually want to generate in this module. So. It's going to ask me, do I want to generate a module file? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Do we want to define it as a feature? No, I don't want to do that. So I'll leave that at the default. Now a composer.json file is really only useful if you're going to release this on drupal.org for the most part. So 
you really don't need it, but I'll go ahead and show it here just so we can take a look at it. If you had specific module dependencies, if you knew that your module was gonna rely on code from another module, you could add that using dependencies here. We're gonna leave it at the default of no. Do we want it to generate a unit test class? Sure, we will. Let's take a look at that. Do we want it to generate a themable template? We can allow that to go through as well. We won't actually be using it, but we'll just show what it looks like. And then it's gonna ask after we answer all those, so it seems like a hundred questions, uh, do you wanna proceed? Yes, let's go ahead. And it's gonna tell us a little bit about what it actually did. So it tells us what files were created, how many lines of code were created, and now we can actually take a look at that. So if I open up an editor here, you can see I'm in my project under modules, custom, code karate test, there's a bunch of code here. So you'll see I have a module file which has just a help page. It also implements a theme which then would use this theme template here which is just an empty twig template. There's this test which is just a very basic test that just tests that the page loads after the module is turned on. The info file is where we named it, we gave it a description, we told it what package we wanted it to be part of, and here's this composer.json, which would say that if I wanted to upload this to Drupal.org, I could use this path, assuming it was available, of course, and there's just some additional information here. Again, we, we don't really need that file for this module to work, I just wanted to show what was actually in it. So before we actually take a look at this, because it's not actually doing anything yet, Let's just go ahead and run Lando Drupal one more time. And we're gonna look at creating just an admin form. So the site actually, or so when we install it, it actually shows something. Again, it's not gonna do anything yet, but if you come up here, there's a generate form config. This is useful for generating an admin form. So a lot of modules, you'll have to have settings that you want your users of your site to interact with. So maybe they have to change some configuration options and that changes how the module works. You'd want to create an admin or in this what's typically called a config form. So generate form config. So if I run Lando Drupal generate form config, it's going to bring me through a form builder process for this admin form. Starting with the module name. So our module is, in this case, Code Karate Test. It'll start auto-filling, so I can just tab over and there it is. The form class name, I'm just gonna call it um, settings form. You could leave that default form if you wanted, but settings form's a little bit more accurate. The form ID can be left at the default. So when you're building a Drupal module or a, any really any class within you know a Drupal module you may need to load services from the container this would allow you to do things like if you needed to log something to the da uh, to your database log or your Drupal log you could uh, load in the logging service or if you needed to um, re really do anything that would involve Drupal services and so that's all documented on Drupal.org what the core services are I mean logging ac accessing config information doing things with entities. So you might need to load in you know, some type of entity type manager service or something like that. We're not gonna worry about that right now. We're just gonna leave this at no. Just know that in a lot of cases, you'll have to do this. You can always do it manually after the fact, but sometimes it's easier just to do it here and it writes some of that code for you. We will allow it to generate a config file. That sounds good. And we do wanna generate a form structure. And this is what's really cool. So it tells me all the available types of forms that I can have here. And I can actually just start building out my form. So if I wanna do a text field, input label, I'm not gonna be very creative right now. I'm just gonna call it my text field. The machine name's fine. Maximum amount of characters, sure, that's fine. The width of the text field, that's fine. 
if I wanted to give it a description, if I wanted to give it a default value, and a weight. So the weight is how it's actually ordered in the list. So heavier items fall to the bottom, less or lighter items will go to the top. I could add another one here. So let's try a select. Size of the multi-select box. We're just gonna do one here. Input option separated by comma. Option one, option two. We'll leave the rest of these at defaults. And once we're done, so we could go through this whole list, right? And create a whole bunch of different form fields. Once we're done, we just hit enter and just leave it blank and it'll go on to the next step. So it's gonna ask me what path I want to use. I'll leave that at the default, but you could configure this path to be something different than this. Do I wanna generate a menu link? Yes, let's go ahead and do that. We can give it a title. I'm gonna call it Code Karate Settings. What menu parent, so where is it going to show up then uh, in, in kind of that menu item? What's the parent of, of our menu link? We can give it a description. So we'll just add something quick and then it's going to rebuild the routes and generate this code. So you can see it generated these files, it generated these lines. So if we look back in our code editor, you can see there's there will be some additional changes here. So if we go to our links.menu.yaml file, this just has configuration. And so YAML files are just configuration files. So if you're not familiar with that, um, it's just a way for Drupal to load in the configuration that you have for, in this case, menu links. So we're going to have a menu link called that has a title of Code Karate Settings. This tells it how it's going to actually interact with the Drupal menu system. It's also a routing.yaml file, which tells you what path it's going to be accessible at. It also tells you what f the actual form is or the class that's going to be called to generate this page. So if we go to this, um, which is going to be defined under source, or sorry, yes, yeah, source, not under tests, form, settings form. So in here's where the actual form itself lives. So you can see we created that text field that I just gave a label of my text field. There's a drop down example field with those various two options that I set and it submits it and it saves these settings into config. So we could then use those configuration settings other places in your module. Again, it doesn't do anything yet, but we're gonna take a look at uh, how it actually works. So we're gonna hop over to the Drupal site and we're gonna turn this module on. So if I search, you can see I have my Code Karate test module here. The description shows up. It's under the Code Karate package because that's what we told it to be listed under. If we save, if I go to configuration system, you can see there's my menu link. And it's showing up there because of how I configured that menu item. You could have it show up in other places if you'd prefer. And it's pretty simple. So I could type in a message here. You can see I can have a select drop down option. This form isn't particularly particularly useful right now, but you can see how it could be useful if you build out an actual form that you would need for settings in your module. If I save it, you can see that the settings do in fact get saved. That's really all there is to it, to use Drupal console to generate some boilerplate module code. We looked through the code a little bit, we didn't get into too much depth. If it's the first time you've ever built a Drupal module, it might seem overwhelming. If you're familiar with Drupal modules, but you haven't used Drupal Console, then a lot of that code's gonna seem easy, but maybe you can now use Drupal Console to actually be generating some of this module code for you. So you don't have to necessarily create all those files manually, you can kind of rely on the tool to build some of the basics for you. That's it for this time on the Daily Dose of Drupal. 
Make sure to check out CodeKarate.com. Sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already. We have some really big things coming here in the next few weeks to a few months probably. Uh, and then make sure you follow me on Twitter, SMThomas3. We'll see you next time. Bye.